Hi, it's Karen with RT Systems. Here to talk to you a little bit about RT Systems. Did you know in 1995 RT Systems invented radio programming? Yezu had just come out with two radios, the FT-11 and the FT-51, that cloned to a radio of the same, respectively. And Rod looked at him and said, hmm, I wonder if we can get it to talk to a computer. And at that point, radio programming, amateur radio programming, via the computer, was born. That was 1995, and we are still here today, working now with over 300 different radios. Let's go back to the Yezu products for just a minute. In 1995, we were working with the national sales manager, a man named Kevin, and we needed a name for the product. And they came up with ADMS, Advanced Data Management System. We've used that name for 22 years for the products for Yezu radios. For a long time, they bought them all. And now we sell quite a few of them, and they sell a few. And they have introduced their own ADMS products. You can tell the RT, RT Systems ADMS products because they end with the radio name. The uh, Yezu seems to be taking a numbering scheme with it, the ADMS 6, 7, 8, 9, and now the 10 for the new FT70. I realize there's some confusion about that. We apologize for that. They are different. The ADMS 70 for the by RT Systems is RT Systems software. The ADMS 10 off of Yezu's webpage is Yezu software. They use different cabling. Ye RT Systems does not use the cable that came in the box. One, because when we first got our radio, we didn't know the cable came in the box. Two, we didn't know the instructions for using the cable that came in the box until they released their software two weeks after we released ours. So we use the RT Systems 57B cable, the yellow cable. It's been around since the, since the VX7, so quite a while. You may have one they use the cable out of the box. And I want to show you a few things about using the cable in the box and why we chose not to other than, like I said, we didn't know it existed. So let's start with using theirs according to the instructions in their software. The first thing you're going to need is an extension cord because I can't reach the plug from where I am. The second thing you're going to need is your charger because the first instruction is connect the AC adapter to a wall outlet and then insert the DC connector plug into the FT70DR slash DE external DC in jack. Do not install any battery. Okay, we're going to do that. Let me plug this in. And let me plug this in. See, that's the adapter. And let me grab the radio here. And I'm going to take the battery off of it. Ah, took the battery off of it. And I'm going to plug in DC power. Right over here, DC power. Now, I want you to realize that if you're in the field, if you're away from your shack, you're not doing this unless you've got AC power out of somebody's motorhome or something. Okay, the radio says external DC. Press and hold the power button for over one second to turn the radio on. Okay, turn the radio on. I just happen to have it in name mode. Okay, while the power is on, disconnect the AC adapter from the transceiver. The radio's on, and I'm going to 
unplug this guy. Use the supplied USB cable to connect the FT70DR-DAE data terminal to the computer USB terminal. There's the cable. Came in the box with the radio. And we plug that into the data terminal on the side of the radio. It's the only place it'll go, I promise. Okay. While pressing the AMS button, reconnect the AC adapter plug into the FT70 DR slash DE external DC in jack. Okay. And now it says ADMS. The ADMS display will appear on the radio. Click the OK button on the computer screen. Okay. In the Yezu program for the uh, FT70D, you'll notice that I've got Device Manager up here in the background because I was playing with it trying to figure out which COM port it was uh, that the radio is actually sitting on of 7, 3, and 4. It's not 4. That's my cable. That's the RT Systems cable because I have now tried six times and when I do communications, get data from radio and click OK and press band, oh, I get a format error. That's kind of interesting. Get data from and click OK. I've already done all the other steps and I'm in ADMS mode and click OK. Boy, it's just not happy at all. Let's see what else I can do here. Let's turn it off. Press the AMS button and turn it back on. It says ADMS, communications, get data from radio. Tell it OK and press band. It says TX on the radio. It's working this time. OK. And it's completed. It goes back to ADMS. I click close. And there I have it. But let's look at the RT system software real quick. Okay. So we have the radio. We have the radio. We have the battery. We have the cable. We plug it into the speaker mic jack. Now this one can be a little hard to get down in the speaker mic jack. Push. You're not going to push it too hard, but push it firmly. Turn it off. Hold the F key. Turn it back on. And it says clone. The only thing you have to watch out for is you, if you get a little lock symbol down here, you've locked it. Just push the power button real quick and unlock it. Data from radio, yes, it'll look right. Hold the F key, turn it on, it displays clone, kick, click OK, and press band. And there it goes. successfully received data, turn the radio off and disconnect the cable. And we tell you to turn the radio off at this point because we truly believe that having the radio off when you plug or unplug anything is the right way to do it. Then the radio is, is just, it's safer for the radio as connections come and go across everything that's down in these ports. Click OK. And there's everything. And notice there's not even COM port set up in here. We don't ask you to do that. We don't ask you to hunt for it. We don't even ask you to get to it. Everything about the radio, we make it just as easy for you as we can. 
I can do this in the field with my laptop, everything on battery power. So keep it in mind, just a few suggestions. It's Karen from RT Systems. Enjoy.